What's cracking? I got a new one for you today. This one's a little bit different. A project that I had an idea for just recently, putting it into action. Let me show you. This is an old trailer that's been around as long as I can remember. We used to tow it behind our lawnmower tractor. It is a John Deere brand. We had a John Deere tractor. It's been sitting for years because the lawnmower tractor has been long gone. And I saw it last time I was up visiting the homestead and thought, you know, there's some things about this trailer that are a lot nicer to work with than this trailer when it's up and running. Number one, both of these are tilt trailers or have a tilt function. This one, I've already taken the handle out. I'll show you that in a moment. But you can see it has a handle that comes out of that hole right there and actuates that lever, releases the front, and it just tips back. And when you are dumping something, this tailgate flips up this way and everything has a clear path right out the back. Contrast that with this trailer where the pin is under here in a little bit awkward place to get. Um, just not as convenient. It's not as far under there as I remember, but still, it's not great. And then the tailgate on this one folds down this way. So if you dump something out, it dumps onto the tailgate because when this is laid down, the tailgate flattens out on the ground at the hinge right there. So it's just not really ideal for dumping, for doing yard work, hauling dirt or gravel or anything like that. It's all but useless. So this one would be a lot better. It's also nice to have some solid sides. It's really nice to have the function of the folding sides over here for carrying something big like a four-wheeler, but for lawn, mower, for lawn work, excuse me, having solid sides, being able to put whatever in here is great. And so I've decided to fix this trailer up and get it so it can be towed by the four-wheeler. And the main thing is to replace the tongue and put a two inch ball coupler on it. So I've got the two inch ball coupler right there. And from McMaster Car, I have here a six foot stock of two by two mild steel. So today's project, I'll show you what's going on with the handle here in just a moment, but I'm gonna cut the tongue off back there at the axle and hopefully have enough material left from that six foot rod that I can also do the supports that are back there. All right, I have got the four wheeler so I can get the measurements I need to put this trailer on. Now I did consider, there's usually a ball hitch right there and I knew there was a hole that could hook up this trailer the way it hooked up to the lawnmower. I quickly ruled that out for two reasons. Number one, as I predicted, now seeing it in person, that tongue is too short for this to be very usable this way. So I need a longer tongue. Number two, everything else that I use this four-wheeler to move around has a two inch coupler on it, such as that. And it would be a pain every time I want to use this trailer to have to take the ball uh, off or put it on to use something else. So since I have to lengthen the tongue anyway, it seemed logical to just do it in a way that I could put a two inch coupler on it and everything be uniform. So somebody had already took the ball out. Uh, they, the four wheeler was borrowed for something else and they took it off. So it made it real easy to just double check. 
And then the other thing I have to check for is height. So where it currently sits, even that way, um, it's probably hard to catch this on camera. Let me see, maybe if I back up this way. But that trailer is just slightly high in the front. And so that's what I needed the four wheeler for. So I could get that kind of lined up the same way and see, I might have to do something with the new tongue as far as somehow getting the coupler up higher so that the trailer rides fairly level. So as a general comparison and measurement, you can see I've got the axles pretty much lined up between these two trailers. That's where that trailer tongue ends and this one clear up here. I would say that's a good, probably close to three feet of distance. Now I don't think on that trailer that I need the tongue that long. On this one, it has this front gate that folds down and locks in to these right here. So this essentially becomes the front end of this trailer. So I think what I need for length is from those brackets pretty much to the end. So I'm gonna get a measurement of that and then we'll compare it with the other one, see what the length is. Okay, so that bracket to the ball is about 33 inches, 34 inches. So just a shade under three feet. And from the front of this trailer, so that is 19 inches. So um, three feet might not be necessary, but I definitely need more than a foot and a half. So this is the handle. Pulled it off, uh, got a little bit of a head start. I meant to film the whole thing and then got excited and got working on the project and forgot to film. So. You're coming in part way through, but this handle was severely bent. That's something that I did when I was a teenager, and so I am fixing that mistake. Um, I've got these two things all but straightened out just by squeezing them in the vise and applying some torque. The last thing I have to do here, as you can see, that handle is a little bit skewed. So I need to move it over this way. I need to get it to bend right here as I've been trying to bend it. It's been unbending this right here. And what I need to do is get a sharper bend on this one to match over here and then get the handle to bend over right here. So I'm gonna try to use this piece of stock right here as a fulcrum so I can twist on that and get it to bend in the right place.
All right, my radio program I was listening to has concluded for the day, so no more voiceover. Let me tell you what I accomplished while you were away. Um, I cut off a length that the bar, the tongue, at four and a half feet, uh, squared up the edge as best I could, and then out of the remaining stock, I cut another two inch piece off, and then I separated all of those into these. Um, and these are going to be my end caps. So I'm going to weld this one on here. Now, on these end caps, um, I couldn't cut them off completely equally because of the rounded corners here. So the other two sides, I've got two that are this size and two that are a little bit narrower. One of those will work out great for this other end right here because this is where the axle will be welded on. And so I don't need a full size one for this side. The other one, I'll see if I can get it to work. Here's what I am anticipating from here. I'm gonna get this put on, um, welded up and all that good stuff. And then for this to ride level off of the four wheeler, uh, the ball hitch is actually a bit higher. So I'm thinking the coupler, that what may be the solution is to take this coupler cut another piece off of my remaining stock that is what maybe six inches, about the length of the black um, sticker there. It's so about that long, and just weld that onto the top like so. All right, I had to stop filming for a minute because I got the dreaded low battery signal. But uh, all you missed was me welding the cap on right here. Uh, it turned out quite nicely, considering I'm an amateur using basic Harbor Freight welding equipment. I'm totally fine with how that turned out, especially for what this trailer is. So now I've got this lined up. I put a mark right there, center of the tongue and center of the axle. Now this axle's leaning just a little bit, that's why it looks offset. So that's actually where it's gonna line up. And then I measured from the here, this corner right here. I can't do this one-handed, so I'm not gonna try, but I measured from this corner to the outside corner of the tongue here, and then same, that corner out to this corner to make sure that my tongue was split in the middle, properly in the middle. And the other thing that I can check actually is to just lower this down and see if it lines up with the center of the tongue. That's a good idea. Assuming that that does line up correctly, I went ahead and marked these braces where they need to be cut. And so I'm gonna take care of that next. And then I'm gonna take a look at the back and see what I need to do as far as welding, you know, a, a plate uh, onto the back of, of this one to seal that up a little bit. So let me set you down here and see. Um, set you right there. That ought to give you a pretty good view. Let's see how this lines up. Lower this down, hopefully without disturbing too much. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that, oh yeah. Yep, that lines up pretty much dead center. That's why where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those cuts. So I wasn't filming this when I cut these off. This one, as I was cutting, it started to bind, and when it finally came off, it kind of popped and pulled that way. This one cut off pretty nicely. Of course, this was already gone, so it didn't have the counter pressure. But interesting to me, if you look at them, you can see they're not totally even how they are, but by the time I cut this 
oh, three eighths of an inch or so off, they just about will line up, I think. So anyway, apparently the, there was some torque on this old tongue pushing it a direction. It got bent some point and I don't know when that happened. All right, here's what I've decided to do on this. I'm going to grind this whole bottom one off. I'm gonna leave the top one for welding purposes. And then I'm gonna take one of those shorter sides uh, for, my, um, for my cap. And I'm gonna get this all lined up and then push that as far up as I can from the bottom which will cover from the axle from the bottom. It'll take care of all of that. So I think that's probably the fastest route to go. The alternative is to try to notch the other one, the cap to fit around this. And by the time I do that, I think it'd be just as fast to cut this off or grind it off or um, leave it as is and try to fill in these sides with weld and I just don't have good access to be able to do that. So uh, I'm opting for getting rid of this bottom one and then uh, I'll show you what, what it looks like from there. Okay, from a speed standpoint, I think that was definitely the way to go. Took me a couple of minutes, but you can see I got that bottom one ground off. All right, so I have that tacked as you can see. Now what I'm going to do, um, I need to get the trailer flipped back up because this back side of it right here is interfering with the new tongue getting flush against the axle just by a tiny bit, but it's enough. So what I'm gonna do, it's time for this anyway, is I'm gonna move the jack out to this end I'm gonna get the tongue level, and then I'm going to level these supports. I'll tack those, and then I think we'll be in to just start getting after some, some welding. All right, there's level for the tongue. I just looked at the uh, house lining up with the trailer suddenly really high. I was like, wait a second, how did that happen? Then I remembered I've put the trailer on some uh, car lifts. That much higher, so. Okay, there is, that tongue is perfectly level right there. And now let's, Get these braces to match. They need to come up. They are a little snug, so. is now bottomed out against the tongue, which is perfect. That's right where I want it. So, I think, I think I'll tack that right there while it's flush. Let me check both sides. Yeah, we're right against it. And I did make sure to use the factory edge on that, so it's, uh, I'm a little more confident that it's a square cut versus the one that I did by hand, that's the one I put the cap on, because if that's not totally square, uh, that's not really gonna matter. I'm gonna go ahead and tack that so that it's got three 
spot uh, attack welts, one on each side of the axle and one on the top. And then it looks like these should line up pretty much in the middle of the tongue, if not a little bit high. But with that tacked, I'll feel a little bit uh, better about maybe torquing up on these and tacking them down. Light tack, not a lot of strength in it, but that'll hold. Okay. So now the question is, how do I get that to flex up while I spot weld that? I think I know just the thing. I think one of these will be perfect. Get that on either side. I'll get it kind of snug and then I'll use a hammer just to kind of tap it up each side and see if I can get it into place and then clamp it down and use that to hold it. Gonna go from the bottom on this so I can tack it from the top where it's a little more of a, a little more comfortable angle. <sighs> the joys of working alone. All right, let's check that. Where's the level? Not an exact science. All right, I don't have one readily available. It might, it might be around here somewhere. So we're just going to have to go with this. And that's right on the bubble right there. I'm comfortable with that. This one, having a little harder time lining up. But I'm pretty comfortable with that too. This is just a utility trailer. It's not going down the freeway or anything like that. So I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna spot those, spot the attack weld those. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be ready to do a whole bunch of weld. Eyes closed. Oh. Well, <laughs> guess I need to grind each side of this off a little bit so it has some metal to grab onto.
not terribly thrilled with that. I'm gonna hit it one more bead. Looks like I got a lot of bead on the bracket, but not so much on the tongue. So I'm just gonna reinforce that on the tongue. Well, not my finest work, but it'll have to do. Let's see if I can get a little bit of this other side before I start moving it around. But I did get a pretty good weld on that, so I'm comfortable moving this around. So I'm going to do that, finish welding. You probably don't need to see the rest of that pretty routine stuff. I'll bring you back in when I get to ready to put the cap on the bottom. All right, I changed my mind on the sequence before I pull the trailer off of these uh, auto lifters. Just so I don't have to move it around as much, being a little more efficient, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the cap because it's at a really good access point right now. So I'll thin out that top edge a little bit so it'll slide in there a little bit more and then cut the bottom off. We'll mark and cut the bottom and then weld that into place. And that's pretty much all there is here for the end cap. So uh, I'm not going to film all that. Again, fairly routine stuff. So, all right, I've got the bevel ground in. I started with about a 45 degree bevel and that was a little too blunt. So I went back over it again and made it more like a 60, maybe 70, I'm guessing. Um, it's a still a little high right in the center. So I'll hit that with the file and take that down a smidgen. But as is, it'll still weld up just fine. So I'm not gonna get too caught up in um, getting that perfect. And then I just put it in place and got my two marks on the back. That's where I need to cut it off on the bottom. So refine those two things and we will be ready to weld this cap on. Okay, being a one-man show, I couldn't show you putting the cap on because I needed both hands, but you can see I've got it tacked in place. That's what it's going to look like. So now I'm ready to move things around and get them in the most comfortable place possible to uh, do the welding. All right, I think the tongue to the axle, I believe, is done. But clean that up a little bit. I'm pretty pleased with how that one just turned out. It was all one fell swoop, pretty much. A little bit spotty on the top, but that's okay. I think. We've got uh, pretty much sealed all the way around. A little slag on there. Okay, I went over this one again just to smooth it out, kind of fill in a couple of holes. Maybe made some more, but that's all right. And we're on this side. I feel pretty good about this weld overall. Not bad, a little goopy, but it'll get the job done. I think I will pull off the uh, latch right here. I'll uh, go ahead and take it apart, put some weld in on that pin and smooth that back out. And, uh, and then get that bracket put on so that it will hold the tongue up while I weld the bottom of the uh, support brackets. All right, this one went pretty quick. There's the old bracket, cut off the old tongue. 
It was only welded on one side, so it came off pretty easy. I'm just now gonna hit each side with the grinder, get these old welds off, and then it'll be ready to go on the new tongue. But pretty straightforward on this one. All right, just took a quick break for dinner. Before I finish up here, I need to run down to Lowe's before they close. I need to get bolts to hold this on. Looks like three inch by that hole measures about half an inch. So I'm gonna go probably three eighths. So three eighths by three. I'm gonna get two of them because I'm gonna mount it on the side. Um, <clears throat> and then I need some cotter pins to replace these old ones. So about this girth, but in a couple different lengths. Um, two of them broke as I took them out. This one made it, but I mean, it's older than I am, so probably do to be freshened up, but I'll take this one for reference. 